do not overthink about the UX process. Do not share the design before giving the design piece. There are two things that are most critical in in this video, I will be sharing my design process as a product designer. I will also be sharing some of the tips that I have gained over the year and they can be helpful for your next project. So without further ado, let's get started. As a product designer, I work closely with a project manager and engineer team. The journey start when we the product designer got the requirement. There are two kinds of need. Either we are introducing a new feature or trying to solve the existing problem. For each of them, I start with ideation. Depending on the project timeline, I usually spend half of my day, which means three to four hours on ideation. Initially, I thought I was spending so much time on ideation, but it looks like it's a standard time other UX designers spend. As you can see in this chart from Nielsen Neumann Group is showing 46% of UX designers spending one to three hours in ideation. Ideation is more about understanding the project and generating ideas without evaluating them. It means sometimes I come up with multiple possible solutions. Allow me to give you an example. Let's say the requirement is to show the information that the user might overlook earlier. Now there can be many possible solutions like showing the notification, alert, banner or widget. So you write down all the multiple solutions. but it is not time to evaluate them. During this time, I talk to a different team members to get a clear idea about the requirement. The first question I start with, what problem are we solving here? In the kickstart meeting, I usually discuss the whole document and gather as many bullet points as possible while they are explaining the problem. When I started my career, I saw other UX designers are asking these questions. I kept thinking, why the heck I need to know these answers? I'm just a designer. I will design based on what they need, right? But the fact is, the clearer your vision is, the better UX design will be. The best part of it, it helps to determine the right problem and the right solution. When I completed my ideation, I start doing the research. My research focused on two key things. One is the user need and another one is the business goal because product design is all about balancing these two things. I need to ensure that my design is less painful for the user but profitable for the business. If you keep thinking about user experience and do not even care about the company goal, you might be losing your job. At this stage, I also gather idea on what competitors are doing why user liking it and what things user do not enjoy. When I have enough information about the user need, goal and competitors, I jump to the next stage of design process which is analysis. During this time, I create the user flow, customer journey map or any flow that helps to organize the information that I am about to show in my design solution. If it is an existing application feature, I design the current flow first, then try to understand why it is not working well and what is working well. This helped me to resort the information architecture. Once my information architecture is completed, I do the initial wireframing. Again, it helps to walk through the structure and give the room to discuss with the team. After finishing my first wireframing, I set up my first meeting with the team to validate what I'm about to propose. In this meeting, I get some feedback and help me if I missed anything from the requirement. After having this meeting, I update my wireframe and set up another meeting with the developers. This developers meeting helped me to understand the technical possibility of my proposed flow. After getting the developers feedback, I update the wireframe if necessary or share the link with the developers for the final check. Once they agree with the flow, then I draw the mood board. Now let's say in my wireframe, I have the tab, model, alert. So based on those UI elements, I start creating my mood board and features idea in my design tool. I never finish my mood board. Instead, I keep updating my mood board while I am designing. After gathering some ideas, I start my visual design. Two essential things here. If the design is from scratch, I will take more time for creating all those small elements. But if the design system is already exist through the company or I have already created, it wouldn't take much time to create all this visual flow. Quick tips, if you are building a design system, build after you complete one or two pages of your designing. For instance, if you are designing a website, start working on your design system only after you finish at least your homepage. It will help you to focus more on your creativity instead of structuring things. In addition, you will have more freedom in whatever you are creating. Once I complete the design, I share the flow with my team so they can comment 
if they think that need to be updated. Unfortunately, I haven't had the opportunity to work with the UX writer, so my team and I do the copywriting content. And yes, beside doing the visual design, I also do the prototyping as well. So technically, I am doing the visual design and prototyping simultaneously. Once my team and I agree with the design, it's time to do the usability testing. I do three user testing because three users will give you 90% of your feedback. Quick tips, there are two things that are most critical in usability testing. First, you select the correct user and ask the right questions. Because any of it you miss, you are doing the wrong validation. After the testing, I create the testing report and final design changes. Once the flow is ready, I present it to the stakeholder and design lead and project manager. In this meeting, I mostly tell the story behind the design and sharing the user testing report and get the final approval. Quick tips, do not share the design before giving the design pitch. Instead, tell the story behind creating this layout. Telling a story provides a strong base of your design and also it proves that there is a logic behind your design solution, not out of the blue. All right, time to hand over the design to the developers. I never share the image version of the design file with them. Instead, I share the Figma or a sketched link. Also, many sticky notes to contain the direction and how the UI element will work. Now, before I finish this video, here are more tips for you. Do not overthink about the UX process. Like, am I following the correct flow or am I following the lean method or double diamond method? Just choose the way that fit your need because eventually you grow your skill the more you do the project more refined your process will be remember the process is there to make a better design solution it's not the law that you need to follow do not jump to the design right after getting the requirement instead spend half of your timeline on things like ideation research or analysis communicate with your wireframe involve your team at the beginning of your process do not surprise the team with the final design it's always need revision, right? Admit it, you can't make your design 100% perfect. There is always a room for improvement. All right, that's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching.